Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Pillow Talk with Dr. Boyce and Dr. Alicia Watkins. My name is Dr. Boyce Watkins, and I'm here with my lovely wife, Dr. Alicia Watkins. We have decided to bring in the new year in sunny yet rainy the Bahamas. <laughs> How you doing, babe? I'm doing all right, but you know what? It's certainly better than ice cold weather in Chicago. How about that? <laughs> that is true. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Christmas is freezing. It was cold. Yeah. What was the threat of that big snowstorm? It missed us. Did it miss us? I thought it hit us. I mean, well, we got hit. We, it was pretty cold outside. It was cold, but we didn't get like a foot of snow like they thought we were going to get. But New York State got it. Did you mm. hear what happened in New York State? No. Oh, well, I heard Buffalo had a once in a generation storm. Yeah. And that's a lot because Buffalo gets too much snow. They get a lot of snow. So they have a whole lot of snow packed upon yeah. their normal snow totals. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Yeah. When Buffalo says they got a lot of snow, then that's that's pretty bad. Yeah. But anyway, how's everybody doing? Let us know. Give us uh, Help us out with the audio if you don't mind. Uh, could you give us a yes if you can hear us? Okay. Uh, give us a yes if you can hear us in the chat. You're listening to Pillow Talk with Dr. Boyce and Dr. Alicia Watkins. I'm a finance professor. My wife is a social work, uh, a full professor of social work and a licensed therapist. And uh, we like to get uh, against our pillows and have conversations that we hope are intelligent contributions to the black community. So um, thank you, Eddie and Dennis. Shout out the city you're from. Let us know what city you guys are coming from. Uh, Patrick Smith, how you doing? Uh, Felicia Ruiz and Sean Hall, April Muhammad. Sheila, Chanel Long, uh, Dennis Spragan says, much love. Claudius is out of uh, Philadelphia. Daniel out of San Antonio. Eli Muhammad. Now, Jim Mack was first out of Chapel Hill. Uh, FYJ, good to see you or good to hear from you. Uh, let's see here. Detroit, Michigan for FY. Uh, Eddie Johnson for Colleen, Texas. Uh, Chanel, Oklahoma. Chanel Long out of Oklahoma. Marianne, Minneapolis. Jesse, Ypsilanti, Michigan. You oh, my God. This is all over. We are spread all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you know, and Michigan's a big deal because they, they whooped the hell out of Ohio State. My Buckeyes got their butts kicked. You're still talking about that. Oh, I'm going to talk about that for the rest ago. of the season. Well, remember, the, the if you're a football fan, I mean, the, the big the big games are coming up. Oh, yes. I forgot about that. So is Ohio State and Michigan, are they in the Final Four, whatever it's called? Yeah, I think Michigan. I forgot who Michigan. I know Ohio State plays Georgia. <laughs> and I think Michigan plays like Hold on. TCU. Ohio State is not going to get past Georgia. <sighs> well, that team. <laughs> that's what that's what the experts say. But, uh -uh. Yeah. Georgia got it this year because well, Alabama's not in it. Well, we believe in Jesus. That's what's up. <laughs> okay. Anyway, need to pray, anyway, let, let's get to our topic. Okay, so our topic today uh, has to do with this interesting catfishing um, situation that happened at HBCU. Now, we did a short little video, actually, uh, Dr. Boyce TV dot com where we actually talked about catfishing and because you were listening to that podcast yeah we uh, were the therapists the... and they were explaining catfishing like who's most likely to get catfish and stuff like that i was at the gym and i was listening to my podcast about um you know about relationships about therapy about research and all this and so they had done a bunch of studies on people who had been catfished and they did a bunch of studies on people who catfish other people. Mm. And so they were given like a profile of what these people are. And I learned something new. Did you know that, um, who's that guy? I told you, he started out being being a catfisher. He's a guy, he's online and he's real popular. You were watching him oh, on the airplane. Oh, you're talking about Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate. He was a catfisher. Ooh. That was unbelievable. Well, wasn't he like part catfisher, part pimp? Like he was pimping, getting his women to have conversations with yeah. men that would cause them to give up money. Is that what it was? It's really, yeah. So he he called in his ex-girlfriends, four of his ex-girlfriends. He called them in for a meeting and said, we're going to exploit men for their money. And I would like for the four of you to help me do that, exploit these men. And um, and two of them was like, man, I'm not doing that. Two of them got up and left and said, I'm not doing that. But the other two stayed and was like, cool, I'll do it. And so what he did was he had them have an online profile. It was actually them. It was their picture. So it was a really strange catfish situation because it was actually their picture and it was actually them. Hmm. But get a load of this. He was the person who sent all the messages to these guys. Oh, really? So the women never sent 
all the online messages back and forth to the men. Really? He just came used from their, him. He just used their pictures. He just used their pictures. Or maybe like videos and stuff. And he used their videos and he they they had like um video chats or whatever, probably on Zoom or something. Video chats and everything was them, but the actual person who was sending the written messages, salacious written messages back and forth was Andrew Tate. What I don't understand is like <laughs> I mean, why would you send money to a person that you've never met? No, you have met them. No, you I'm, just talk, I'm talking about somebody that you've in never person. been in the same room. That's true. I guess what they could go on maybe, a date. Maybe, yeah. He would tell them to go on a date and don't. I wonder if he, I mean, think about it. He did talk about like being a pimp or something. So I wonder if he would just send the women to go actually even sleep with the men and then I get their money from I don't them. know. It, I don't know if they had physical contact with each other, but you yeah. know, you just know the person. It just makes sense. It makes uh, sense. When I, when I heard about the Mateo guy, mm -hmm. the football player from Notre Dame, remember him? Yeah. Who was catfish. We saw it on Netflix. Yeah. Now that, that was a little you know. weird because I don't understand why you would have a girlfriend for four years that you never saw, but I, I'm sitting there. Here's what I'm thinking. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I catfishing is terrible. Right. But, and I, and I knew a friend who got catfished and it, it was easy to spot. I Wait, remember you got friends that do all sorts of things. I do. I have lots of friends. You and so friends. one of my friends, I remember he was telling me about this great woman he met in Africa who um, uh -oh. he showed me her picture and he said, that she has her own her own house, her own whatever. And I said, well, have you met her? And you said, no. And uh, and I said, well, you know, it sounds great. I said, but just be mindful. If she asks you for money at any point, you need to make sure you say no. And uh, he said, well, she hasn't asked you for any money yet. I said, no, they just know how to take their time. So about three or four weeks later, he, I, he told me, he said, yes, yeah, she finally uh, came around to asking me for money. She said she wanted to come see me and asked me to send her the money to come see, see me. And uh, I told her no. And uh, I said, good. You know, so I think that it's, you know, it's um, catfishing kind of confuses me. But then again, maybe it doesn't work on regular people. Like, didn't you say that there? And we're going to talk about this, right? There's an HBCU case like, at Coppin State that's a crazy catfishing story. It's so convoluted. I have to, I couldn't even, when you were telling me the story, I couldn't even get the names and the situation straight in my head. I think it's I almost got like it I need a board. I need a board. A storyboard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let's, let's jump into that. Okay. And then, and then we'll talk more about catfishing and just kind of the different <laughs> types of people to get catfish. And I have some theories on you. I have some Uncle Boy's theories. But wait, what a coincidence that I happen to listen to that podcast. Mm. And I don't ever listen to podcasts like that all the time. That's so true. And then the very next day, here you come with this story. I know, right? It's like the Immaculate Conception. The catfish so, story. <laughs> so here's the deal. Here's the story, right? So this is crazy. Do me a favor, by the way. If y'all could hit, please hit the thumbs up button. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Uh, share subscribe, hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when we go live. Also, you can get a free e-copy of my book, Financial Love Making, if you go to boysandalicia.com. Uh, so feel free to go there. You can have the book totally for free. Um, all right, so here's here's the deal. So this happened at Coppin State University. And at Coppin State, uh, there was this, there's this coach there named Juan Dixon. Now, Juan Dixon, uh, I, don't know, I don't know if anybody's heard his name, but he, wait, well, at least. He's on my show that I like to watch. Well, that's his wife. His wife is on the Robin. Yeah, but he's on there too. Is is he? Yeah, they're engaged. Oh, so they're both on their Real Housewives. Of yes, Potomac. that's really? my show. And I don't watch any of the Housewives series, but I do watch the ones on Potomac. Almost because I wish I lived in Potomac. Oh, really? I love that. I love the East Coast. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, that's nice to know. That's why I watch it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Real Housewives of Potomac, Robin Dixon's husband, Juan, who was a basketball star at the University of Maryland, um, he apparently had a player that uh, named Ibn, uh, what was his last name? Ibn something. Oh, let me get the name. You got to pull it up. But <clears throat> this player sued Coppin State, and he also sued Juan Dixon, and Here's what this player claims happened. His name, I think Ibn Williams, I believe that's his name. So he basically says that he got catfished by um, a former player who became an assistant coach, uh, that there was this other player who, um, you know, who graduated, became an, 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 a graduate assistant. And he was that happens a lot. Him. That happens a lot at universities. What happens a lot? Well, you graduate from the university and maybe you want to do a fifth year. Or maybe your four years is up 
and you want to do a fifth year or maybe you want to get a master's degree, that one year master's degree program. Mm -hmm. And so they'll hire the student to come in and work and then you can get your master's degree. It happens a lot. Okay, okay. okay. So this player, Ibn Williams, oh, you wrote it says, down. I wrote their names down. Oh, good, okay. So Ibn Williams fired, filed the lawsuit, and uh, basically he says that he started getting catfished by a person online who, court, who sort of, I guess, convinced him to send some nude photos or whatever. Well, apparently, according to Ibn in his lawsuit, he claims that the person that was actually catfishing him was one of the assistant coaches, a guy named uh, Lucian Brownlee, allegedly. And, uh, and basically, I guess Brownlee, from what I've read, he played at Coppin State and then right. graduated. He was the fifth year. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so he got, allegedly, according to Ibn's lawsuit, which, again, all this is allegedly. I think it's really important to state that because you don't know who did what exactly. You just know what the allegations are. And he says that he was con convinced to send uh, nude pictures and that he started getting blackmailed, that the person catfishing him was saying, if you don't give me more pictures, I'm going to um, I'm going to release the pictures that I have. And then this was the crazy part. So I need you all to pay attention. Give me a yes if you're following all this, because it gets a little bit just crazy, crazy. So <laughs> according to Ibn Williams in the mm -hmm. lawsuit, Brownlee then goes to Williams and says, I'm being catfished by the same person too. But he's not being, but allegedly he's not actually being catfished. He's, he is the catfisher. So the catfisher is claiming, so the predator, the according to the lawsuit, the predator is claiming to be the victim. So he says, mm -hmm. I'm being catfished by the same person you're being catfished by. Or not catfished, or, or I guess they didn't know that. Blackmail. Blackmail, so he didn't know Blackmail about right. I get in my predatory terms confused sorry not catfish blackmail mm -hmm. yeah the catfish situation didn't come out until later on he figured out we should probably tell it in order or something i don't know how I to know, tell the I story know. i'm totally messing up the story but you get it right mm -hmm. y yeah so um that's interesting because this is not a catfish situation like your friend who was asking for money and um asking for money this was like send me pictures so they you know, talk you into sending pictures yeah. and then take the pictures and blackmail you based on the pictures. Yeah. So according to the lawsuit, Brownlee told Williams that he was being blackmailed by the same person and that the person said that if you and I don't sleep together on video, they're going to release these pictures. Right. So according to the lawsuit, they, you know, did, did, the, did the thing and um, sent in the video, and then the person, the blackmailer, said, "Send me more videos, or I'm going to release all this stuff." And apparently, according to Williams in his lawsuit, Brownlee was all along he was the person who set the whole I thing. I wonder up. how he found that out. That is really, <sighs> you know. Um, so it seems like Brownlee befriended Williams, mm -hmm. just started conjuring up in a relation because in order to get that type of information out of somebody you have to like become friends with them which which makes sense right you know you have to be friends with them <laughs> so brownlee brownlee had a had a you know was interested in williams and it was just like, oh, and then that's how you convey all this information. You just say, you just kind of say, oh, man, I'm getting catfished by this lady, such and such. She's going to send pictures. But like, I don't know. Like, it do, I <laughs> someone's mean, blackmailing you with pictures, boys. Yeah, I think that 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 whole idea that you're scared that your pictures will be released, that's kind of interesting, right? I mean, I think, first of all, obviously, I mean, first of all, he's a college kid, right? And you're going to make mistakes. Um, but I would just generally say to it's my embarrassing son, embarrassing and humiliating. To, well, I would say to my son, like, don't send stuff like that out. You know, I oh. mean, or it could be used against you. But if all. you feel, if you feel, you Un feel unless, like you unless you're okay with somebody passing that on, if you're okay with, like, if you're proud of your junk and you don't care who sees it, people send salacious pictures of themselves to people all the time. Yeah, but you trust that that person will hold those photos right. sacred. And then what if they break up with you? Do you but trust breakups happen all the time. Right. That's why you don't send those pictures. Yeah, but people still do that. They do, and I I wouldn't do it. Only if I ever did it, it would be because I just did not care. Because remember, you're releasing it into the wild. It's out there now. It's digital. <laughs> <laughs> but, 
you know, if you if you see a future with somebody and you trust them and you really like them, I, I think it's kind of I'm first of all, I first of all, I think it's kind of it's kind of um I don't know, kind of kinky to send it, it's like kinky. naked photos. Like I don't really think that that's you know. I don't see anything wrong with that, really. I don't see anything wrong with it as long as you understand the risk. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying don't do it, I, especially I, if you're apart and you can't see each other. And, right, and and, and, I, and I'm just saying you want to show somebody what they're missing. Yeah, but you want to try to get into their head and yeah. get them to fall for you, and I don't know, get them maybe, to do all I, that. You send studied, pictures like that. Yeah, but maybe I study too much cybersecurity to know just how risky that is. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying you got to know the risk. Imagine if that person was no longer your boyfriend anymore or no longer your girlfriend. Would they do something with that, those images? And it, you know, and if the answer is yes, then. I don't know. I, I guess it's like well, just people don't no, want to walk so around. Let me, let me finish the story. Let me finish okay. the story. Okay. So, uh, so Ibn Williams, the the student, was being blackmailed by this person who was uh, catfishing him. He didn't know he was being catfished, and his alleged friend, according to this lawsuit, Lucian Brownlee, was basically saying, "I'm being blackmailed by the same person, <laughs> and that if we don't have sex on camera, then they're going to release these photos." So, um. Ibn eventually, I guess, stopped speaking with the catfisher. He he let he he said, "I'm done. I'm out of here," and that's when all the videos and all the photos got released to the oh. staff, to the team. Oh, yeah. so they actually released they, all of it. They that. followed through on okay. the threat. Wait, right. hold. Okay, so wait a second. So, Luke, wait, get pull the names up because I want to make sure I get the names right. So Brown Lee, mm -hmm. aka the catfisher, right, released all of these pictures. And himself in it too, I guess. And released all these pictures. I guess so. Wow, that's like you telling on yourself. Okay. Right. So somehow Williams found out that Brownlee was the catfisher. I guess I don't know how he found that out, but he allegedly, according to this lawsuit, he went to the coach and he went to the university, and he claims that they asked him a lot of uncomfortable questions about his sexual history, his sexual orientation, and then they took away his scholarship. I think that they just didn't believe him. I think that that's what it was. I think that they just didn't believe him and they just said, kick rocks. And then also, according to the lawsuit, they told Williams that they knew Brownlee had mental health issues. And, mm -hmm. um, and they're claiming in the lawsuit, I guess they were negligent by allowing a person with no mental health issues to have supervisory authority over young men. So that's the okay. Lawsuit. Well, just because you have mental health issues doesn't mean people. A lot of people have mental health issues. They don't do stuff like this. You know, mm -hmm. this is really, you know, this is really extreme. So, um, so wow. So what did they try to do? Bury the story? Because I know that's a Title Nine violation. If, if that I mean, if, if that it, was what happened, um, I don't know if they tried to bury it. Um, I think it's more like they're just dealing with it. I guess they're dealing with the lawsuit. You know, and and I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's um, it's interesting. This story made me think about what you were telling me about catfishing and I and why some people are more vulnerable to it. Like, didn't you say didn't you have a list of like the people the, who are vulnerable to catfish to being yeah, catfish? Yeah. yeah, there's some personality characteristics. What are they? Um, Well, one, you're just very lonely. I don't know if that's a personality characteristic, but people who are very isolated and really lonely. And that's what happened with. um. Mateo at Notre Dame, he was far away from, you know, his home. He didn't know anybody. Can you imagine the cold weather right now in the cold weather and you're from Hawaii, you've never even seen snow and here you are playing football. And so, um, so yeah, so he said he is people who are lonely and very isolated, um, people who are very cooperative. I don't know. I don't know what about cooperation <laughs> it makes you want to um susceptible to being catfished you don't know what it is about cooperation yeah people who are I cooperative mean, you go, it's interesting. yeah i mean you go along with you just what go along they ask with you it. to do okay yeah uh, i mean you're you're lonely so you meet somebody that could be the woman or the man of your dreams and mm -hmm. and then they tell you that they need help right like I, I saw you know when we watched that one netflix documentary about the guy who was misleading women i don't even it was beyond catfishing he was just putting on a whole charade he would present these um emergency scenarios that would take advantage of 
the trust he built with you as mm -hmm. well as the loyalty that you had you make a connection him. and you're just like oh my god i'm in big trouble mm -hmm. help me out but that's when they're trying to get money out of you he wasn't trying to get money out of him yeah that's well, really you know, interesting. Well, I think I honestly I think one big group of victims of catfishing that isn't talked about much is black women. I think a lot of black women are being catfished mm. um in various ways. Uh and and I say that because the percentage of black women over the age of 35 who are not married is is growing like consistently and hmm. uh, they're also doing well financially. They have a lot of money. And um and I had a friend who uh you know was a high flyer, you know, went to an Ivy League school and made a uh, three or four hundred thousand a year. And her type of catfishing wasn't so much digital. It was basically a guy who came in and just knew how to say all the right things. And next thing you know, he's like all in her house and he was going through and using her credit cards and stuff like that because he knew like how much money she had and he knew she had this big old gigantic house. You had another catfished friend? Yeah, well, I think, wow. cat, I think, cat, well, I don't know if you call that catfishing, but I think if you talk about just manipulation, manipulation, yeah, mm -hmm. like, I mean, generally, I think if you have something that other people want and you're desperate to trade what you have to get what you need, which might be a relationship or companionship, I think that that can create pretty desperate opportunities or dis desperate situations, especially if you're dealing with people who are manipulative. And there are a lot of manipulative people out here. I think that there are women who are trained, like you talked about Andrew Tate, training mm -hmm. those women to, you know, find lonely men who can't typically date a woman in your category mm -hmm. and just play them, you know, get, get their money. And then same thing might be true. You know, I, I know it's true on the male side. I mean, I, I've known people that have done, I've, I've seen on both sides, you know, I, I had she, a, okay. yeah, I had a cousin who was the most romantic guy in the world and knew exactly, he he knew how to figure out how to tell a woman exactly what she wanted she to, hear. Wanted to he, hear. He knew how to sell the dream and mm. he would sell the dream and get what he wanted. And then some he, lonely woman with all this money. And he's like, you're right for the picking. Huh? Man, I've been watching White Lotus. I'm sorry, white this show White Lotus it's been staying with me. Usually when I watch a um a series on TV, I just let it go. You know, I just mm. watch it and let it go. White Lotus has been staying with me. Mm -hmm. Man, okay. I highly recommend it. it's on HBO Plus, I think. It's on HBO, but okay. HBO Max is what I think it is called. It's Apple Plus. Mm. Right, well, HBO Max. But anyway, so White Lotus was kind of like an elaborate scheme. Was that very um no, it wasn't catfishing because the person was who they say they were. Well, not quite. It's just great. That second season, I, I cry I never really tear up when I watch something on TV. But that storyline, boys, you just didn't see the second season and you just you missed Ooh. it. But it was some similar to a catfish scenario in a way where the guy was manipulating this woman. She had a ton of money. She had a lot of money and it was just a big elaborate plot to get the money from her. I won't spoil it for people, oh, but wow. it was really fascinating. Well, by the way, you're listening so. to Pillow Talk with Dr. Boyce and Dr. Alicia Watkins. My name is Dr. Boyce Watkins, and this is my wife, Dr. Alicia Watkins. If you could, could take a minute and hit the thumbs up button, uh, make sure you subscribe to the platform and hit the notification bell. And uh, also, uh, Dr. Alicia is a licensed therapist. And she's been seeing clients for a long time. If you'd like to learn more about what she does, you can visit coachingwithdralicia.com or follow her at Coaching with Dr. Alicia. So this week, we're actually um, filming or recording from the Bahamas. And that's a goofy little picture of us on the airplane today. And uh, I was a little That's me being excited. Yeah, well, I was I'm a, excited to be here. I was a little disappointed because I got here and it was just like pouring rain. I think it's supposed to rain all week, boys. Yeah, no, right? Well, no, it lets up. You looked on your phone. It lets up, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm cool though. It only like in the Caribbean, it only rains for like a day or two. Just like Florida, it'll be like rainy for like a day or two. No, okay. And I, then the I, sun I, comes out. Yeah, and I just love it here. It's better than Chicago weather. So yeah. I ain't got no complaints. But yeah, yeah. So okay, so so let's let's get back to the catfishing thing. You know, I like I my theory on the catfishing thing might be First off, it seems to me, like you were saying, that some people that are more um, prone to be victimized by catfishing are people that are actually on the autism spectrum. Did you? I did so, say that. Well, that's what the podcast told me about, um, that uh, there were people who were victims of catfishing, that they were a little bit on the spectrum. They were on the spectrum of autism. 
Mm, okay. Yeah, probably on the lower end, of course, or are higher, high functioning autistic individuals. Mm. Really high function because there's autism is a spectrum. And so mm, okay. anyway, so um, so mildly autistic also were individual. And that's interesting because maybe I don't know. I don't know if a person who's mildly autistic could be a little more gullible, you know, but you would have to be naive is another characteristic of somebody um, who could be a victim of catfishing. Someone so, who's naive. OK, so did they talk about who's most likely to catfish another person? They did. And I can't remember what all they said. I probably should have written it down before we started the podcast. But um, but it's clearly somebody who's manipulative. And what's interesting is that um, they they were talking about there's catfishing businesses, almost like Andrew Tate's business. Mm. There are just people on the Internet. If you're online dating, beware. There are people on the Internet who just like that's their business. Like, OK all of these spam accounts, <laughs> you know, these spam accounts trying to get you cryptocurrency and you got a spam account. I have one. I have several spam accounts. Is that a sign that you're just like famous or something? You have oh, spam you, accounts. You're talking about <laughs> fake accounts. Like when people like fake. Yeah. It's industry. similar. It's similar to that. Like fake accounts. People contact me all the time about these That's fake true. accounts. So I guess that is a type of catfishing because there are yeah. fake Boyce Watkins accounts that, message people and they say you know hey have how's your investment going and would you like to invest with this project that i'm doing and they they do have a whole conversation with people and people have sent me screenshots i don't know exactly how to stop it and they've gotten thousands of dollars oh bit. no yeah yeah I've, I've, I've met people who've lost you know a couple thousand dollars and i feel terrible about it i've been trying to warn everybody but you, you know, they still, they still, they just hit so many people, right. and Facebook doesn't do enough to get those people off the, the uh, platform. bots and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, they don't do a good enough job, so it kind of makes me sad. So just a warning to everybody: if I ever act like I'm trying to come into your inbox and sell you crypto, it's not me. I promise you. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think that you know, I guess you know, when I'm thinking about the catfish stuff, it's, um, I mean, to me, it, it, it does come off as common sense, and or at the very least, I would say. Typically, if something seems too good to be true, there's a good chance that it is, or at the very least, it needs to be sufficiently verified. Yeah. So it's like, you know, the people who are perpetrators of this catfishing, like they're putting up beautiful photos. <laughs> Not to say that that person's out of your league, mm -hmm. but you got to kind of think about it. You got this Adonis person, mm -hmm. these gorgeous photos of someone, and they're only interested in you. I don't know. It's just like, okay, come on. You got to be a little objective. Well, I would say at the very you least, um, if you met somebody online, I would say spend as much time in person with that person as possible. Yeah, that, quick, that'll, quickly, that'll quickly get them in person. Yeah, a lady mm -hmm. tried to catfish me about 10 years ago. Did I ever tell you about that? Really? Yeah, yeah, she got on the phone with me and everything. Oh, 10 years ago? Oh, it was a long time ago. Wait, wait, oh. wait, wait before you, baby. Well, no, no. I mean, it's just catfishing. So, wait, so... Ten years ago, mm -hmm. you did you was it? How did you meet her online? I think so. I don't you did online dating, voice a little bit, but not much. <laughs> Everybody meets people online. They make okay. friends online and stuff like that. And if you're single and somebody's nice, was it in your DM or was it like an online dating? Did she slide think, up in your DMs? I don't think it was. I think she slid in my DMs. I don't think it was online. I didn't do. I, I couldn't do online dating because even ten years ago. I was enough of a public figure that I couldn't put my profile up publicly. It would be weird. But I think I did meet somebody. and um, So this hadn't been 2012. Yeah, then. social media is not a bad place to meet like-minded people. Okay. Like, yeah. you know, the, the lady I dated before you, I, I met her on social media. And she's a great lady. She was good for the time she was in my she life. She slid in your DMs and you made it. Well, she did. She did. And, and to be quite way. honest with you, like I just think that that's something that happens. when wow. you're If you're a public person, you go and always have people sliding your DMs. And, and the way women slide in your DMs is usually they're not super direct. But they're just really oh, they asking you, can you give me some financial advice, boys? <laughs> oh, how about I slide? I'm going to slide in your DM. Well, you ain't got to slide in my DM. I'm going to slide in your DM. <laughs> I'm going to slide in your DM. It's a role baby. play. You can role play. Oh, okay. DM. I'm going to slide in your DM, pretend like I'm somebody else. I'm going to catfish you, but I'm going to make it. We'll just play out the whole scenario. How about that? <laughs> okay. I'm going to slide in your DM tonight. How about that? <laughs> So it, anyway, <laughs> anyway, so yeah, but you know what? It's it's kind of um, it it yeah. But when the lady did that thing, I remember 
I talked to her on the phone a few times and she really, if it wasn't, I, and I, I really in hindsight believe she was faking. Right. And cause I, and I remember that I'm not stupid, you know? So eventually I'm like, okay, I've, I've gotten to know you on the phone. Mm-hmm. When are we going to meet in person? And every time it was time to meet in person, there was always an excuse, oh. you know? And that's when I was like, okay, this is all a game. Somebody's playing games, you know? And, um, and I remember somehow, I don't remember how, but I think I got a note from a guy who asked me if I knew this lady. And he and I said, yeah, I do know her. And he said, yeah, she keeps on, um, she's talking to me a lot. And every time I try to meet her in person, she always makes an excuse. Uh, and that's when I was like, okay, this is silly. I'm not going to be stupid. Yeah, it's You have to be kind of cautious with online dating, I think. You don't know who they are. You met their family. Yeah. You haven't done any of that. You need to be cautious. And I think... Um, you know, it's interesting. I've I've heard of scenarios where they're just like, "Yeah, let's meet up," but we I can't meet up because I don't have any gas money. <laughs> right. They were like, "Send me some gas money and we'll meet up." Well, you know, they just had the, like they had those old scams where they used to tell you that you that they were somehow like they were like the son of a prince and they needed to like get ten million dollars. Oh, the Nigerian. Bank. Yeah, and they need you to send like a hundred dollars so they can pay the postage fee so you can get your twenty percent of the ten million. And people will fall for that. That that's the part that makes me really curious about the spectrum of intelligence. Oh, it's so funny. And I'm just remembering a Dr. Phil show. I think Dr. Phil was doing a string of catfish shows. Mm. And he would have it would be this like heavy set white lady and and she would be somewhere in Iowa. <laughs> somewhere. And then it would be this Nigerian person who would just come on the show, not even come on the show, they he would be streamed in or whatever. And they would just confess their love for each other. And she would have sent him thousands, tens of thousands of wow. dollars. And you're looking at her and you're like, she doesn't make that much money to be sending him. Mm. And he's promising her all of these things, delivering on none of it. Oh my goodness. That's sad. I think that's really sad Awful. because it really just speaks. It makes me sad because it makes you think about how many really lonely really desperate people there are yeah you know and i and my heart goes out to them you know i mean yeah obviously because you could say something basic like well okay if something seems too good to be true it probably is like don't send people money if you haven't met them and that's going to work for most normal people but i believe that the people that that advice does not work for are just people that are just in some sort of psychological space i cannot understand isolated and yeah 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 Mm -hmm. and and, and it's sad when it happens and i think people who do that to other people are terrible human beings um you know and and it's uh but it's going to get worse because now, you know, they got AI and they can do deep fakes. That's right. AIs. Yeah. And it's not even a person. It's a computer. You falling in love with a computer. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's not a game. Yeah. They can, they, they're getting so good with AI that they can fake a person's voice Yeah, and take you, take your image and make it look like you're talking to the person. Like you're sending them messages. Or oh, how savvy. Yeah, yeah. Now, I don't know if they could do a Zoom call or something. But. but they know the psychology. The thing is, they know the psychology and how the mind works, how they can play upon your innocence and play. You know, there's a lot of really good citizens. There's a lot of people who just feel for other folks. I mean, it could be people that you just know. They're like, you know what? I know if I give him a sad song, he's going to send me money. Mm-hmm. You know, I know that I could. If I call him up and I tell him some sad story, then boom. Next thing I know, he's cash apping me some money. So, like, you know, there are people who manipulate. And I think that's so important to have other people around you. Because I think if you have, like, friends if you start talking to like a support system about what's going on in your personal life, that person would be like, hold on a second, this person, wait, let me try to, because when you're in it, you don't get to see it. You're fuzzy because you're so in it Mm. and, and you're, you're being, your heartstrings are being pulled or manipulated. And so another friend of yours would say, Hey, this person's manipulating you. Don't send that person no money. Well, why are you responsible for whether this person, keeps their house or don't keep their house or does uh, whatever you know so it's um it's kind of like an outside person needs to kind of like snap you out of it in a sense mm, okay mm-hmm. i can see that 
Yeah, so maybe talk to other people about Manipulating. it. They, they might see something you don't have see. Have a sad story. I always have a sad story. You're like, okay, come on. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm thinking like maybe men can be vulnerable to catfishing because we might have that whole superhero complex. And mm -hmm. I want to say, want to say Captain Sable, save you're right? Mm -hmm. And then um, for women, I think women, because women are so sensitive and caring and emotionally connected, you know, like like I've I've always been fascinated by how you know, men can feed women a fantasy or just yeah. romance and women will just be swept away so badly that they'll do things that are completely irrational. And it's not even like sexual, like, like how those guys um, will be in prison and some woman will literally be really in love with a guy who's been locked up for the last eight years. That's right. But that's, that's, that's heavy. I, I don't understand that at all. Yeah. I mean, there's some, we've talked about that. There's some women who only date prison inmates. No, that's like I'm only gonna, that's what you need to go see. With you, you need to go see coaching <laughs> with Dr. Alicia. You need to you need to go and get some therapy oh, you'll buddy. find that. Yeah, that that's that's a whole other conversation. Oof. Then what I did see that lady though who did um there was a video about that, a lady who said yeah. uh, she only dates prison inmates. And we she talked dates, about she, that. I think she said she dates several of them at once. And I guess in, maybe in her mind, she knows where they at. She knows they ain't out cheating in, <laughs> with other women. <laughs> like I, I don't know. Well, a lot's going on in prison. A lot's <laughs> happening in prison. Let's yes, not even. Is. So she'd rather forfeit that for whatever's happening in prison. Well, okay. You know, who knows? I mean, people people have their own preferences, but but anyway. And, and that's the hard part about it. It's like you have self determination. Like if you're a grown adult, ultimately you could do whatever you want to do. And and as a social worker, we believe in self determination. We believe that you should be able to make your own decision. You should be empowered to do that. And so, in a sense, when you're like telling somebody what they need to do, you're taking away, it's like a, you know, you're taking away their sense of self and sense of direction. So it's, it's really difficult because legally, I don't know, I don't know what case law there is on this, on people manipulating you out of your money. It's almost like, you know, it's like the lemon law. <laughs> it's like, it be like theft, buyer beware, you yeah, know. Or theft by deception. Theft I mean, by I deception, imagine that yeah. would be, you know, I, I'm sure that there's got to be some law that will protect people. But I think what... Maybe, you would think, but I've watched so many Netflix documentaries on well, um, the the t the tender swindler. Remember that? The well, tender I think, swindler. I think, it, I think it can get tough in those cases because they're international, right? Mm -hmm. And you're talking about trying to go across international borders to get somebody. And that does become tough. You know, I think with the tender swindle, though, I think they had him arrested on oh, some charges. They went after him, right? I but want to say but he's did, free. But didn't he get, like, plastic surgery? Yes, that's how bad. <laughs> he got plastic surgery, Damn. yes. Changed his name and everything. Oh, my gosh, that's crazy. Just, he's a, they're miserable individual. People who prey on individuals like that. And it makes me look at Andrew Tate totally different. I mean, of right. course, I kind of not quite a, a fan of his but you know it does make me look at people like that differently well <clears throat> knowing yeah. that that's his background well you know who knows mm -hmm. well anyway guys um so uh my name is dr boyce watkins this is pillow talk with dr boyce and dr alicia watkins and uh oh, this, let's get back to the story right? this is well I'm, I'm hungry now so i think it's time to end this oh you're time. hungry okay yeah. so we're done i'm gonna go eat a salad i just woke up and i'm like ready to i'm ready, ready to, to go. go i'm ready to talk <laughs> yeah 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 well anybody who came in just now that you can go back and listen we were talking about this whole um catfishing situation at an hbcu and this coach um juan dixon ends up being sued and uh, it's kind of sad. This is a sad story, but um, you can rewind and, and hear the rest. I think I'm going to go eat a salad because I'm Oh, hungry. well, I had a whole bunch of thoughts about, you about that thoughts? situation. If you have thoughts, babe, then share No, that's thoughts. okay. Everybody hit, hit, the, hit the thumbs up button. Thumbs up, thumbs up, share, subscribe. Uh, Dr. Alicia's website is coachingwithdralicia.com. Alicia has some thoughts. So um, I'm, no, I would I like to hear your thoughts. How, go ahead. I was just thinking like how awful it is to be a college student and to be you know, it's your first attempt to launching from your home. You're all excited. You're at an HBCU and nothing's more comfortable and nothing's more inviting. You lower your guard at HBCUs in a way because, you know, it's just like coming home again. Like HBCUs have that nice, warm feeling where it's just like you're loved and accepted. So it's a really comfortable space. And I don't know how this HBCU, if that happened there, but I just... I mean, I grew up in an HBCU. I actually grew up from 
from the age of four Tuskegee. all the way up. I grew up at Tuskegee and it, it is, it was a great warm feeling um, being at HBCU. And um, so I'm certain he just was relaxed. It was like, oh, everybody's my friend. This dude's my friend. I mean, into, into, and he said probably was too embarrassed to tell somebody about it. Can you imagine if his parents knew? You know, he could tell his parents. He, he was probably embarrassed. He's away from home, almost like the Mateo fella, you know, who um, who didn't doesn't they don't want to tell somebody, you know, what's happening to them. You're being you just got catfished, or you realize you get catfished. You kind of hold that secret inside because there's so many. It's, it's hopes and dreams when you go to college that you're going to get it right and to have to tell somebody, oh, my God, I messed up. I got myself in this pickle, you know. Um, yeah, I think that that's true. It's stressful. Um, clearly, it sounds like he made a mistake, right, with the lawsuit. So <clears throat> Ibn Williams, who sued Coppin State over a catfishing incident where he's allegedly being catfished by uh, one of the coaches on the basketball team, um, um, a, a guy with the last name Brownlee. I don't have his first name. Um, but you know, I, I get that, right? I think the bigger question I have is not so much whether this was unfortunate for him, but I'd be curious to know exactly why the university and the head coach have to be dragged into this. You know, they, they didn't know what was going on. It's a Title IX they violation. Yeah, and, and I think that they probably would have advised him, you know, don't be sending pictures to somebody online, you know? And, and it's kind of like if he decides to send these pictures to this person online, and he's getting catfished, you know, yeah, that, that coach is a pervert and they got rid of him, but it allegedly, right. If that's what he was, I just don't, I guess the idea of pushing all that all the way up the food chain, like, okay, the university is responsible for the fact that the coach was a pervert and that I decided to do yes. the XYZ with the coach. I feel like mm -hmm. that's just a lot, you know, that's the part about the law I don't get because yeah. it's, it's almost like there are some human beings that have to treat other human beings like children and protect you because at Ohio state, it happened. The, the football coach had an assistant coach who was allegedly abusive to his wife. And he just said, I'm not getting involved. That's their marital issue. And the wife complained to the coach and said, you know, he's, he's, he's abusing me, blah, blah, blah. blah. And he's like, look, you know, divorce call him. The police. They call the police. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And they told the coach that it was his responsibility to have done more. And he's like, they're grownups. Like, it's not my job to be up in somebody's business like that. That's their marriage. No, we'll see um, in universities, um, you have to report it to the Title IX coordinator. Mm. You have to. It's mandatory. You'll be in big trouble. Yeah. Title IX. Hmm. The Title IX. You have to, even if you hear it, if you overhear something, like it has to be. If someone tells you anything. Good old Title IX. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, guys, <laughs> we're going to head on out of here. Um, okay. This is Pillow Talk with Dr. Boyce and Dr. Alicia Watkins. My name is Dr. Boyce Watkins. And uh, if you'd like to see more of what Dr. Alicia does, feel free to visit her website at coachingwithdralicia.com or you can follow her on Instagram at coachingwithdralicia. So we will be back uh, from the Bahamas. We'll be here for a few days. So we will check back in with you guys um, very, very soon. So until we meet again, have a good night and we will talk to you guys later. Take care now. Okay. Bye, -bye. bye everyone.